Lord God, I pray that you help them to grow in their love for one another, their love for you, and that every day as it passes, that they will accept one another as a gift from you. Lord, help them to sense the presence of your spirit and to savor these moments. And we ask that you be a part of this ceremony and that you look with favor and upon and bless this marriage. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our Savior has declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. It's also instructed that those that enter into such a relationship are to cherish and to love one another. They're to bear each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness and in trouble and in sorrow, and in honesty provide for each other and for their household, and to pray and encourage each other in things pertaining to God, and to live together as heirs according to His grace. The New Testament tells us that happiness comes from putting others first rather than ourselves. Matter of fact, the scripture says, Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, be subject to your husband as to the Lord. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Let each individual among you also love his own wife, even as himself. And let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. You see, marriage isn't really a 50-50 type of relationship. It's more of a 110-110. It's both parties giving their all. Kevin and Tara, this is your day. This is the day that you have been waiting to begin. This is the day of delight, not just for those that have watched you uh, grow in, in your love for one another, but for the for the two of you. And so I want you to take a deep breath and relax. And, and this is meant to be a, be a time of great joy and and, and a, a time of gladness. You know, I'm reminded there were questions about love and marriage and sex that were posed to kids that were anywhere from 5 to 10 years of age. And, and I wanted to share with you a few of their responses. Uh, Judy, who was 8, was asked, what is the proper age to get married? Here was her answer. She said, 84. <laughs> because she said, at that age, you don't have to work anymore and you can spend all of your time just loving each other. Little Jim, who was 10, he was asked, when is it okay to kiss someone? Here's his answer. He said, you should never kiss a girl unless you have enough bucks to buy her a ring and her own VCR. Because she's going to want to have videos of the wedding. And Roger, who's 8, said, how can people make love? He was asked, how can people make love last? And he said, don't forget your wife's name. That will mess up the love. Just some good advice from youngsters. As a matter of fact, over the years, I've, I've collected a lot of advice on making love last. Uh, let me just give you some of the, the comments that I've received. And one older lady said this. She said, live by the golden rule and you'll never and never go to bed angry. Always kiss and make up. One young man said, I'd say even if you're not angry, kiss and make up. It's fun. <laughs> Little five-year-old girl, she said, God will help them and they will, they'll kiss and they'll hug a lot. One mom said, many babies for granted because nothing is greater than the love of children and of being a family. And one grandfather said, don't get a dog. <laughs> Kevin and Tara, I want to emphasize that the success uh, that you have for each other is not so much on a set of circumstances uh, that's been provided to you. It's not set so much dependent upon your environment or your feelings, or even really on finding the right sickness and in health and forsaking all others yourself to her only so long as you both shall live. I do. And you, Tara, take Kevin to be your lawful wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance from this day forward, to love him, comfort him, protect, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others to keep yourself to him only so long as you both shall live. Yeah. You two have chosen a ring as a sign and a seal of the vows that you're making today. Now, although these rings are, are small in size, they're actually very large in their significance. Maybe just because, I mean, they're made of precious metal. And you know, that tells us that love is neither cheap nor is it common. Indeed, really, love costs us.